Everyone knows about Oklahoma's famous historic highway, the Mother Road, Route 66. That nostalgic drive across our state from Quapaw in Green Country to Texola in Great Plains Country. The brown historic route road signs have been woven into our very culture. Where I am here in Elk City, I live two blocks from the historic route and drive on it regularly. Historic Route 66 is part of our daily lives. But what many of us here along the Will Rogers Highway might not even know, Route 66 is just one of the famous highways that cross Oklahoma. Let me introduce you to the Jefferson Highway. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. The Jefferson Highway was one of the earliest transcontinental highways. It was named in honor of our third president, Thomas Jefferson. It was established in 1915 and ran from New Orleans, Louisiana, north to Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. It was intended to provide a direct link from the Gulf of Mexico to Canada, thus giving it another name, the Palm to Pine Highway. The Jefferson Highway was not a single continuous road like Route 66, but a network of existing roads designated as part of this route. This route traveled through Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Minnesota, and finally Manitoba, Canada. Today, much of the Jefferson Highway has been absorbed into other highways and interstates like many of the other older historic routes. However, there are still many historical markers and other signs along the way to commemorate the legacy of this essential early highway. You can still travel much of this historic route in eastern Oklahoma. The distinctive blue JH signs and the official Oklahoma historic route signs mark the old highway. From the south, you'll enter our state from Texas near Colbert, Oklahoma. The route takes you north-northwest through communities such as Durant, Caddo, Atoka, McAllister, Eufaula, Muskogee, Wagner, Pryor, Adair, Venita, and Miami. To the north, you'll exit the state to Kansas from Pitcher, Oklahoma. In the show notes, I'll have links to more information about the Jefferson Highway, including a free Oklahoma Jefferson Highway tour book. It's fascinating how much Oklahoma history has happened along this highway. Two moments come to mind on both ends of the route. South of Colbert, Oklahoma, was the site of the Red River Bridge War. And there are these sad events surrounding the contamination and eventual evacuation of Pitcher, Oklahoma. Both events should probably be their own episode someday. Since I'm on the topic of Oklahoma, here are a few random geography facts for you. Impress your friends with your Oklahoma knowledge. (laughs) Oklahoma currently has 77 counties, but on statehood in 1907, Oklahoma only had 75 counties. Harmon County was split from Greer County in 1909, and Cotton County was created from Comanche County in 1912. Cimarron County is Oklahoma's westernmost county. It sits out there on the end of the Oklahoma Panhandle. It's also the only county to border four different states, Kansas, Texas, New Mexico, and Colorado. It's also could be said that it borders Texas twice, with the state of Texas to the south and the county of Texas, Oklahoma, to the east. Cimarron County is also home to the highest point in Oklahoma at Black Mesa in the far northwestern corner of the county at 4,973 feet or 1,516 meters. It's also the only county in Oklahoma to touch a different time zone, since it borders Central and Mountain Time. The lowest point in Oklahoma can be found in McCurtain County, in far southeastern Oklahoma, on the border with Texas and Arkansas, at 289 feet or 88 meters in the Little River, a small tributary of the Red River. 
And finally, Oklahoma has six tri-state points connecting it with two other states. Three are back in Cimarron County, New Mexico, Colorado, and Oklahoma, Colorado, Kansas, and Oklahoma, and New Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma. The other three are in eastern Oklahoma. In Ottawa County is Kansas, Missouri, and Oklahoma. In Delaware County is Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. And again, in McCurtain County is Arkansas, Texas, and Oklahoma. Got some more election news for you. First, an update from the March 7, 2023 election. State question 820 was defeated with 61% voting against the proposition. So currently, there is no legal recreational marijuana in the state. Next, there's another election coming up very shortly on April 4th, 2023. Local issues will be on the ballot this time. School boards, city councils, county commissioners, and city and county bond issues. I encourage you to visit the Oklahoma State Elections Board to see if you need to head to the polls. The Oklahoma School for the Deaf in Sulphur, Oklahoma, offers some free online American Sign Language courses. Each course provides eight lessons focusing on grammar, proper signing, and culture. The spring session runs until July 31, 2023. If you're interested in learning ASL, sign up today. I'll have links to the show notes to the courses. In the first podcast of this year, I announced that In the News was returning to the podcast. I'm afraid plans have changed on that. Uh, The goal was to bring you some interesting local news from around the state, but I hit a little snag with that. Paywalls! (laughs) The majority of local Oklahoma newspapers, where you would get the local news, have their news behind a paywall in one form or another. Now, I am all for supporting your local newspapers. If you can, please subscribe. Currently, I'm subscribed to the Oak City News, my hometown paper, the Oklahoman, and the Oklahoma Observer. As much as I would like to support other local Oklahoma newspapers monetarily, there is no way I can. And I'm afraid the news I was hoping to share just doesn't get filtered to TV or the wire services where I can access that news. What does is mostly crime, crashes, or disasters, and honestly, that's not what I wanted to share here in the podcast. So, I'm not going to be doing an in-the-news segment here on the podcast, unfortunately. Kind of disappointed about that. If I do find something interesting that I can share with you, I'm going to put it on the podcast like, say, a free ASL course offered by the Oklahoma School for the Deaf. That's the kind of stuff I wanted to share, and I just did. (laughs) However, what news I can share, mostly a lot of political stuff, unfortunately, (laughs) I do share daily at Blog Oklahoma on Mastodon and weekly in the Blog Oklahoma newsletter. So please check those out. I have links to everything in the show notes at Blog Oklahoma. Net. Did you know we have our own cafe press store? There you could purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. Please head on over to cafepress.com slash Blog Oklahoma podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist on Spotify. There are many hours of music for you to enjoy. I'll have links to this and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. This has been the Blog Oklahoma podcast for March 26, 2023, episode 178. Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time.